This year marks the 100th anniversary of the Lake Placid Sinfonietta, a group that ensures classical music resounds in the Adirondacks every summer. About 20 professional musicians come from all over the United States to harmonize in the city of Lake Placid, New York and in surrounding communities. Since 2015, the Sinfonietta has also presented special concerts of chamber music with much smaller ensembles, led by pianist Nava Perlman. Many of the chamber players say their time in the Adirondacks helps them improve their artistry. We met the musicians at a rehearsal for the Lake Placid Sinfonietta Pro Musica Chamber Music Series. Musicians playing chamber music spend much of their summer rehearsing and performing. But for violist Denise Cridge of the New York City area, visiting the Adirondack Park comes with a few perks. In the free time that we have, I love going out and hiking. It's exercise, it's freedom, it's nature, it's beauty, and I love working up here because I have access to this beautiful park. Cridge says going to the Adirondacks reminds her of long ago summers. I grew up outside of the Albany area and we used to come up here and camp and hike. I did giant when I was a kid, okay, up to the shoulder. Um, but we went to Santa's workshop and had ice cream and root beers and we hung out up here during the summers, it was lovely. Another musician with a connection to the region is Cynthia Watson of Cleveland Heights, Ohio. The oboist's husband would hike in the Adirondacks as a boy. So he had talked about it with a lot of nostalgia, and so I was kind of excited to get up here and see what, so what it was all about, and I was very taken with the beauty of the area, the mountains and the, um, the hiking, and, it's, and the lakes, so many lakes. Everywhere you drive, there's another lake, so it's, it's really gorgeous. I enjoy hiking because it's a quiet activity. You can kind of get away from things. And I've been listening to the bird sounds. I, I'm not a bird watcher, but I'm kind of interested in that now. Um, I was practicing the other day. And my room is by this wooded area. And there was this bird singing, da -de -da 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 -da. and he had this rhythm and these pitches. And so I played it back to him. And he, he responded again. And, and I played it back. And we did this back and forth a few times. And we had a little conversation, <laughs> oboe and bird. <laughs> Both musicians say an occasional hike helps improve their musical performance. You have to use your whole body to play an instrument. And hiking is a way to be outdoors and absorb things that are beautiful. And it puts you in a place where you can just communicate. When you get out and hike, it's almost always uphill. <laughs> so it's pretty cardiovascular. And playing the oboe is actually that way also. You work up a good sweat and you can run out of air and you, you feel like you've worked out. So every time I'm powering up a hill, I feel like, oh, this is gonna be great for my oboe playing. <laughs> I can take a better breath. Or, and the same with my biking. When I get on my bike, if I'm grinding up a hill and then, um, you know, struggling up, I, I kind of remind myself, oh yeah, this is going to be great. <laughs> because it, it really is going to help your playing. When you play music in beautiful surroundings, it sort of filters into your general mood, and then your general mood filters into your playing. Concert pianist Nava Perlman helped found the chamber group in 2015 at the request of the Lake Placid Sinfonietta. 
they were interested in sort of creating more of a festival with other offerings just um, to add to what they already have here. And one of the things they don't have regularly is chamber music. Um, and I had come to solo with the orchestra a few times. And so we sort of ended up um, working together on this idea of my being able to help organize some of it. Perlman, the daughter of famed conductor Itzhak Perlman, says Adirondack audiences differ from those in her home base of Manhattan. When you're in a, in a big urban area and there's something going on every single night, um, you get used to it, you grow accustomed to it, you take it for granted. And that's not the case here. Um, here there's, you know, it's a lot of woods and a lot of mountains, not, you know, a theater on every block with something to offer every single night. So when we do come and play, the audiences are very enthusiastic. I think the Adirondack audience is a lot, a lot like me. They, they are enjoying the beauty of this place. They want to add to that experience the beauty of some art, some music, and connect uh, with just beauty in general and um, someone else's expression of how they interpret that nature beauty. My sense of it is, is they love having musicians come and bring this beautiful music to them so it's in their backyard instead of, you know, a four-hour drive or a two-hour drive. The audience is really receptive. They seem to love the concerts. They enjoy uh, interacting with the musicians. That's really fun. These are audiences that are going hiking during the day. They might be on the lake canoeing. And then at the end of the day, they like to relax listening to great music. And it's almost like they have a very fresh and um, unjaded uh, approach as listeners. It's a great place to perform music, um, to get instant feedback, to uh, commune with nature and I feel inspired here, so that's something I can take home with me at the end of the summer. You can enjoy music from the Lake Placid Sinfonietta on their CD. It features musical pieces played during the 100th season, including a piece by composer Michael Torkey, commissioned to celebrate the centennial of the Sinfonietta. Torkey was inspired by the trees in the Lake Placid area when composing the work. You'll find the CD, The First 100 Years, on CD Baby, iTunes, and on the website of the Lake Placid Sinfonietta. And for more stories about people who shine brightly, head to mountainlake.org slash spotlight. Spotlight is supported by the Glenn and Carol Pearsall Adirondack Foundation.